Welcome to Healthy Living. I'm Lori Johnson. Thanks for joining us. Our special guest today is Dr. Michael Roizen, a great friend of CBN. You've been a guest on our 700 Club show so many times. And, Thank you. And I've enjoyed interviewing so, you so many times over the years. And uh, one Now thing, you have your own show. Uh, yay! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching. Uh, one thing that is, is really sort of like I consider your trademark is you're always on the cutting edge of science. We remember decades ago when you first came up with the concept of real age, which is you could be 40 years old but have the body of a 50-year-old or the body of a 30-year-old depending right. on your lifestyle so choices. So your calendar age can be, or your biologic age can be now for women 32 years older or younger than your calendar age. So at age 75, you can be as young as 43. I love it. That gives us all something to shoot for. And then the opposite can be true, but we don't want to talk about that. And then I remember talking to you. You were the first one who ever uh, talked to me. First time I ever heard about kimchi and probiotics and those healthy right. bacteria that come from foods like kimchi. So there again. And so once again, you're on the cutting edge of uh, medical and health news with your brand new book called What to Eat When. And really kind of the news headline, which is fascinating, is it really matters what time of day you eat. Right. And it's really fascinating. I, right. I don't think a lot of people realize it. So you could eat the same number of calories one day as the next and gain more weight depending on or, when or, you or, eat. Or lose more, right. So um, what happened is, is, as you said, so we follow the science very closely. Seven to 10 years ago, we started seeing data on in animals that when they ate in the day mattered a great deal. Remember the culture changed in America, so we would have fourth meals and we would eat late at night, et cetera. And they started studying that in animals. And the animals that ate the equivalent of four meals a day, ate all the, you know, for 18 hours, ended up with heart failure. Then about two and a half years ago, there started being data in humans that intermittent fasting that was, and especially when you did it in the evening, when mm -hmm. you stopped eating it, when, so I've got a guy here called Mr. Sun. Okay. So when you I eat, love it. <laughs> when you eat with this guy, is, when this guy is out, um, I'm gonna put him here just okay. for a second. Okay, this is important. Block. This, this prop is very, very important. Right, so when you eat when he's supposed to be out, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., uh -huh. you actually are hacking your system to maximize your health and your weight loss. That is a calorie. We were always taught in medical school, a calorie is a calorie is a calorie, mm -hmm. but it isn't. It isn't. A calorie in the morning is less than a calorie in the evening. Amazing. So it's and it's a huge difference. It's about a twenty-five percent difference. Wow. Say that again. I think that's such a big, big, uh, important thing. A calorie in the morning is less than a calorie at night. Right. And so my favorite. Say, now there are so there are about ten studies in humans, mm -hmm. but my favorite is of Spanish. This group of Spanish women because they eat their biggest meal at lunch, mm -hmm. and there were four hundred of them who were overweight. And what they did is they randomly allocated them to eating their biggest meal before 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. or after 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. Same number of calories. The group that ate before 2 p.m. lost 25% more weight. That's a than lot. They, that's a huge amount than after 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. And so I was pretty skeptical. And so you, you always do it on yourself. For, you know, as a, I'm, I'm in the old school of researchers, right? You always do it on yourself before you expose patients or subjects to it. Um, there's some great stories about that that we could do on another show. But anyway, um, of all the research that's been stopped because the guys did it on themselves first and found out, or the women. They're their own guinea pigs. Right. Um, and so what we, what was, I was amazed when you eat more early. I had been skipping breakfast and just having coffee for breakfast, right? right? A lot and, of people do but, that. But when you eat more early mm -hmm. and stop eating at 7 p.m., Three days later, you're not hungry in the evening. Okay. And it's no big deal. 
And so you, you end up going, I go now from 7 p.m. to 10 a.m. without food. I eat breakfast at 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. So it's 15 hours. 15 hours. So you get the health benefits of intermittent fasting, mm -hmm. the weight loss of ketosis without any sweat, w without having to eat a pound of bacon or, you know, a, a lemon detox or whatever, and without having to give your credit card to someone. <sighs> This is great information. It's really revolutionary and life-changing, and you can lose weight and be healthier with very little effort. We're going to take a quick break and be back with Dr. Michael Royzen, author of the new book, What to Eat When, right after this. Welcome back to Healthy Living, and our special guest is Dr. Michael Royzen, Chief Wellness Officer at the Cleveland Clinic and author of the wonderful new book, What to Eat When. When? When is the key? Because as you were saying, we want to eat when Mr. Sunshine is up, only when the sun is up. And when the sun goes down, stop eating. And it's when the sun in North America, if you will. So it's 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. If you're in the Antarctic, we don't want you eating 20 hours a day. So <laughs> um, it's 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Right. And, the, and the second rule is more early, less later. Right. All right. So within and, that window of sunshine, you want to try to eat as early as possible. Right. We're going to put mm -hmm. him down for a little all bit. Right. And the reason this is so significant, the, the science behind this is all about insulin and insulin resistance. A lot of people don't understand that, so you've brought some aids to help us. So I'm going to play Mr. Insulin. And what Mr. Insulin does, if I can get this to work here, is I'm putting on Mr. Insulin. Mr. Insulin is a way of being the mailman to glucose. So what do I mean by that? Well, you normally have sugar in your bloodstream after you absorb food, after and you get food. And sugar in your bloodstream, that's called glucose. Right. And the mailbox is your cells. Mm -hmm. So what Mr. Insulin does, the mailman, is he takes the mail, glucose, and gets it into your cells and that's a good thing mm -hmm. because that's how you get energy yeah. and your cells function. Right. But during the day, other hormones, your chronobiology, your circadian rhythm, causes the mailbox to make it tight, tougher to get the mail in. So Mr. Insulin becomes insulin resistant, right. he can't get the mail in the mailbox. Right. That's and, what insulin resistance is. Right. We that's hear what so we much get, about that. We get that with diabetes, mm -hmm, type mm -hmm. 2 diabetes. So Mr. Glucose stays in your blood and becomes triglycerides. Yeah. And so that's not good. Yeah. When you have triglycerides, boom, you get this stuff, fat. Ew. And right, it's pretty ugly. Mm -hmm. But in addition, it's heavy. Mm -hmm. And that gives you hold it. Wow, how much is this? That's five pounds. Whoa. So the average American has four and a half of those, has 22 and a half pounds overweight. Mm -hmm. And the reason is because as the day goes on, Mr. Insulin is less able to function. He mm -hmm. becomes, if you will, ineffective mm -hmm. or we develop insulin resistance. Mm -hmm. That's due to that circadian rhythm. We know of circadian rhythms because of sleep, mm -hmm. that same thing occurs with insulin. So if we've got a normal blood sugar in the morning, by the evening we're pre-diabetic. Mm -hmm. If we're pre-diabetic, we become, if you will, diabetic in the evening. And that's the whole reason why you should eat more early and mm -hmm. eat only when the sun is out. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. And, and so we really want to start... Um, eating uh, the bulk of our food, at what time of day before, is optimum? Before 2 p.m. So you want to eat a, a bigger breakfast and a bigger lunch. Now, what happens if you're a shift worker? Right. We don't know the data. We haven't got the studies mm. in humans. In animals, you want to eat earlier, or at least you want to eat 75% of your calories before eight hours before you go to sleep. Mm -hmm. So prior to going to sleep, count back eight hours, mm -hmm. that's when you want to eat your biggest meals. Okay. So if, you're, if you work 12 to 7, you want to eat and go to sleep at 2 a.m., mm -hmm. you go back eight hours, what is that? That's about 6 p.m., mm -hmm. so you want to eat all your calories before 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. If you work crazy night shift, unfortunately a lot of us have yeah. to do it, then you want to eat early in the night shift, not when you get off work. 
Mm -hmm. All right, well, we're going to talk a lot more about this with Dr. Michael Roizen, author of the great new book, What to Eat When, right after this commercial break. Stay with us. Welcome back to Healthy Living. We're talking with Dr. Michael Roizen, the Chief Wellness Officer at the Cleveland Clinic and author of the wonderful book called What to Eat When. We talked about the when part. We want to eat only when the sun is up, which is about 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. So basically we go for at least 12 hours of fasting, maybe even longer. You say you usually go from 7 p.m. until 10 a.m. the next right. day. Right, so that right there, that salmon burger, is what I normally eat for breakfast. So you can cook them in the evening. So uh -huh. one of my favorite phrases is dinner for breakfast. So, I like it. <laughs> um, you can cook. So we, have, we generally have more time in the evening to cook. Mm -hmm. And so you cook in the evening, mm -hmm. but you eat a salad, and I'm going to go through that in a second, mm -hmm. but you can eat a salad at mm -hmm. dinner, and for breakfast you eat your dinner. Right. So And there's some advantages of that. We'll get to in a second. So okay. what do you do for snacks at, at night? So I have these little chocolate discs. Oh, Try one. thank you. They're, they're, I love chocolate. They're 22 calories. 22 calories. Where'd you get these? So well, they're um, this company, Feathers, but they're, mm. aren't they delicious? Mm. They're dark. They're dark chocolate. So snacks should be walnuts or dark chocolate or my favorite is chickpeas, mm. the other favorite, if you will. I think that'll be the snack of uh, 2019. But chickpeas. chickpeas, so they're healthy mm -hmm. and they're roasted. So what you do is you take a couple cans of chickpeas, you rinse them out, you dry them out on a uh, paper towel, you then uh, put them in a little bowl, like about that size, mm -hmm. or a pan with a little extra virgin olive oil and your favorite spices, mm -hmm. mine are curcumin, garlic and rosemary mm -hmm. and you put a little of it on and then you put them spread them on a baking uh, dish for I've got you so you can't talk with that chocolate <laughs> I'm done for, you, you put them on the baking you probably roast them at 425 400 425 mm -hmm. for 10 minutes shake it a little bit mm -hmm. another 10 minutes mm. they're crunchy, crunchy. Aren't oh, they? love them so and you know chickpeas so, are not that expensive. They're very inexpensive, mm -hmm. right? And so mm. and and so so, good. so walnuts, chickpeas, dark chocolate are my favorites. Keep talking. So, I'm going to keep eating. <laughs> okay. So salmon burger for breakfast, and um, there, you know, I I brought them from uh, Costco because I love. Now you the, actually buy these salmon burgers just like this. Well, you have to cook them, mm -hmm. but they're they're actually the overage of the Alaska salmon run mm -hmm. at Costco, so they're. Um, I have no interest in Costco, but they mm -hmm. taste delicious. And, and again, pretty affordable. So they come just like this. All you have to do is cook them. In other words, you don't have to put all the spices and things in, no, but they're and, healthy. And actually, uh, I do put spices on top mm -hmm. of or in the pan. Right? bite? Sure. Um, so the... Uh, mm. so, I need that for breakfast. So anyway, so that's right. And so it's mm. really healthy. Mm. And what you find is after three days or four days of doing this, mm -hmm. then... You don't feel hungry at the in the evening anymore. Yeah, a lot of people so, say, "Oh, I'm so hungry at night." But if you and, push and, through for a few days and don't eat at night, those cravings will go away. And and eat in the morning. Mm -hmm. So the key is you've got to eat in at 10 a.m. and you got to eat it before 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. So eat the biggest. Now this is a salad that's a lunch salad. It's got a lot of veggies, mm -hmm. but you'll notice it looks like a creamy sauce. Yeah, mm -hmm. all that is is we took an avocado, mm -hmm. put it in a blender, mm -hmm. and blended it till it was smooth. You add a little olive oil, whatever extra virgin olive oil, mm -hmm. to get it to be liquid, mm -hmm. and then you can pour it on. So it's really easy. And walnuts, avocado, walnuts. Um, and then healthy green. This is actually a salad that's almost made for your bones. Mm -hmm. What your bones want is uh, vitamin D, vitamin K, and calcium. The leafy greens have the mm -hmm. calcium mm -hmm. and vitamin K, mm -hmm. and then you add a little salmon to it, which you've oh. had in the morning, or into this, you can cut that in, in small mm -hmm. pieces and put a little in for lunch, mm -hmm. and you get the vitamin D. That's where you get it. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. an ideal dinner, if you will. And what I love about this big salad is when you eat a lot of greens and a lot of vegetables, it also fills you up so well. Right. So you don't really crave all the junk food. Right. And by putting the nuts and the protein, the, a little protein in mm -hmm. it, you then don't feel hungry. Mm -hmm. Now, this is actually 
a farro salad. So farro. it is another grain with a little veggies thrown in. Mm -hmm. But we put we made it last night mm -hmm. and put it in the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. When you have whole grains in a refrigerator, mm -hmm. they turn into a resistant starch. So what do we mean by resistant starch? They don't increase your blood sugar any place near as much as they would when they were warm. Wow. So by changing them from hot to cold, and you, you sweet potato is another one that um, works that way. So by switching it from um, hot food to cold food, you actually are hacking your metabolism. So the whole thing, eating during the, when the sun is out, I like to say is it's really a, a hack on your metabolism mm -hmm. to get you to um, maximize your health and, and your weight loss. Beat the system. Right. All right, this is fascinating. We're going to be talking more with Dr. Royzen right after this commercial break, so stay with us. Welcome back, and we're talking with Dr. Michael Royzen, author of the wonderful new book called What to Eat When. We already discussed when. In fact, you call your eating plan the when way, and so we talked about... Right, I should tell people that all the recipes are on whenway.com. Whenway.com, perfect. And so. uh, these are wonderful. And, you know, the salmon burger, which you eat for breakfast and recommend doing that, you just basically grill these this, that's in, exactly. on a grill pan, right? Right. So this is, um, and one of the keys is how you cook the food. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, if you, if you deep fry a salmon burger, it's not a salmon burger anymore. <laughs> it's, you replace the fat in the salmon yeah. with what's in the deep fryer. So that's one of the reasons you don't fry food. Okay. But Alaska salmon, this is, if you look at it, and I have no interest in either this company or Costco, Ditto. Um, which I wish I did, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, these are trident, and all they are is 100% salmon with, I think, a little olive oil with them. Great. But uh, they're the yeah. overage of the Alaska salmon oh, run. Heavy. Um, and so you just mm -hmm. get them, put them in a grill pan. I grill them whatever temper, you know, whatever you like. I like mm -hmm. to do it so they have a, a little bit of char on them. Mm -hmm. um, you can grill them in a uh, tin foil or in aluminum foil mm -hmm. so that you don't have the, the char on them mm -hmm. if you don't want them. But you cook them and put in spices. So I use a lot of um, garlic, if you will. I love garlic. Oh, yeah. Now, garlic in the morning means you got to save at least a little bit of time to brush your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully people are doing that anyway. But, and you know, I thought this was fascinating. This is farro salad, and farro begins with an, the letter F, is actually a carbohydrate. And right before the break, you said something that I'm not sure our viewers caught, which is when you eat carbohydrates, you should eat them cold. You can cook them but then cool them off because they're not, the, the insulin impact is less. That's right. fascinating. So what happens is the, the, the starches, especially the whole grain, uh, gra the whole grains and the bread and even um, uh, pasta. sweet potatoes and pasta. Sweet potatoes. So they become what we call resistant starch. They are hard to digest. So you don't digest them. They become much more like fiber Mm -hmm. and are a fiber substitute, mm -hmm. but they don't raise your blood sugar any place near as much because of that. And, and getting a high blood sugar level is the, one of the problems. So we uh -huh. go through the science of that here. I don't, I don't know if we want to talk a little bit more about that, but everyone knows that when you measure diabetes, you look at hemoglobin A1C. Mm -hmm. yes. All hemoglobin A1C is is a hemoglobin molecule with a glucose or sugar attached at the A1C position. Mm -hmm. That renders that protein less functional. Mm -hmm. So the hemoglobin's job to release oxygen, it doesn't release oxygen as well mm -hmm. when it has that sugar there. So, and that comes from the peak level mm -hmm. of sugars. Oh, so what you want to do is eat your starches cold. Yeah, so, this, so you can have grains, you can have carbohydrates, just try and, to eat them cool. And, and that's one of my favorite. Gorgeous, this has actually rice in it. Right, so again, it's cooled. Mm -hmm. We made the salad at night, but it's a great thing that you can take one of these in a little packet to lunch. Mm -hmm. The other thing you can take to lunch is a soup. So mm. soup, veggie soups are great, but mm -hmm. this is, if you look at it, uh -huh. again, it's avocado and broccoli and some carrots. 
Um, so it's a wonderful salad for because mm-hmm. um, it gives mm-hmm. you a lot of great grains mm-hmm. and a lot of great veggies, mm-hmm. and it's easy to prepare. Mm-hmm. Now talk about coffee. So, coffee. Eighty-two to eighty-eight percent of us uh, in America are what we call fast metabolizers. Mm-hmm. If you're a fast metabolizer, you get a lot of benefits. If you're a slow metabolizer, twelve to eighteen percent of us are you get only side effects. What do we mean by slow metabolizer? A slow metabolizer is someone who gets a headache, gastric upset, anxiety, or um, if you will, arrhythmias when they eat a, when they have a cup of coffee Mm -hmm. in less than an hour. Okay. So what you want is the coffee in, um, if you have it for an hour, you don't need a, you know, people are getting genetic tests. You don't need a genetic test. All you need to do is taste the coffee, have a cup of coffee. If you don't get a headache, don't get gastric upset, don't get anxiety, don't feel like, oh, I'm all jittery, Mm -hmm. then you're one of the 82 to 88 percent of us that are fast metabolizers. And coffee decreases Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's disease. Six cups a day or more decreases it by 40 percent. It decreases liver disease. It's one of the best things if you're a recovering alcoholic or if you've got liver fibrosis. It's one of the best things for recovering from that. It also decreases nine cancers, including breast cancer. Love so, it. one of these, so coffee, it decreases those 20 to 25%. So, coffee is a great food, but you want to have it through a filter and black. Okay. So the through a filter is because the filter, all paper gets rid of something in it that raises your lousy cholesterol levels Mm -hmm. and increases atherosclerosis. And black because the stuff, the coffee, creamers, etc., and the sugar are not healthy for you. Mm -hmm. So coffee, black coffee, the more you have if you're a fast metabolizer, the better you are. So uh, once again, the book is called What to Eat When. We could go on for hours. The information is amazing. But the good news is you can find out all this information on the website, which is the when way, mm-hmm. W-H-E-N-W-A-Y dot com. Wenway dot com. And Dr. Michael Roizen, Chief Wellness Officer at the Cleveland Clinic, always a pleasure. Thank you so much for the great information and for all you do to keep America healthy and to prevent all these terrible diseases and keep people out of the doctor's office and out of the hospital. Thank you, Lori. <laughs>